passage. The bipartisan bill seeks to trump-proof future election certifications in a number of ways. Here to tell us more is Senator Alex Padilla, Democrat from California. Senator Padilla, thank you for coming back to the Sunday show, and thank you for coming on set here in Los Angeles. Uh, absolutely. Welcome to uh, my neck of the woods. Yes, <laughs> yes, for once. Back with you. Thank you. So, Senator, you are on the Rules Committee. Absolutely. Um, there is this procedural vote that's going to happen. Um, one, why is it so important that we do, that this gets done? Here's the critical. And, and let me uh, uh, remind folks that uh, in addition to being a senator from California, I served as California Secretary of State before joining the Senate. Ah, that's right. Overseeing elections in the most populous and diverse state in America. So I could talk to you everything from ballot design to vote by mail to uh, certification of elections and, of course, the Electoral Account Act, which kicks in every 40 years, which was abused, right, exploited, mm -hmm. misinterpreted uh, as part of January 6th, when Trump invited and incited a deadly insurrection in the nation's capital, it was the Electoral Account Act that they were abusing. So what we will begin the process of doing in the Senate this week is tightening up that language to say a couple of things like better protecting against rogue governors, legislators that may want to look at election results and say, no, never mind, we're going to send a different set of electors uh, as part of who should be the next president of the United States, making it abundantly clear what the powers of the vice president are and are not mm -hmm. when it comes to accepting those electoral votes in Congress every four years. Because the, the, the chance, the threats against Mike Pence, you know, were about perceived uh, ambiguity in the law. I disagree. But if we can tighten up that language, we need to do it. And we need to do it now because... Even though the November midterms are upon us, we know that that's really the kickstart of the next presidential election cycle. So it set the rules clear well in advance of 2024. Right. This is all about this is all about getting things in place for 2024. However, there's the Senate bill mm -hmm. that you guys are going to discuss, but there's also a House bill, which is a, which is a little different. Will the two chambers be able to reconcile the differences and actually get a bill that can pass both chambers? and get to the president's desk for a signature. Look, I, I firmly believe so because there is both bipartisan and bicameral support for uh, the need to get this done and do it sooner rather than later. So slightly different versions of the bill trying to achieve the same goal right now, whether the Senate acts in the House bill, the House acts in the Senate bill, or it's a conference committee, different ways to get there. But I think there's building momentum uh, to uh, making sure we get this done. But is there bipartisan support? to do this because are there Republicans who are on board with the electoral um, There are already 10, maybe even 11 Republicans that have lent their name publicly to the Senate proposal of the Electoral Account Act. We'll start hashing out in rules committee this week. Uh, but bottom line, like I said, making sure we're protecting against rogue electors or rogue governors, legislators trying to undermine the will of the people in their respective states, uh, making it clear what the vice president powers are and are not. Mm -hmm. uh, and the most important thing is one big piece of doing everything we need to do to avoid another uh, January 6th uh, after future elections. And then we go right back to work, by the way. I should not leave this uh, out of the conversation to the work that we started on protecting our fundamental right to vote and access to the ballot. If there was one concern about the Electoral Account Act is it's specific to the Electoral Account Act, but does not encompass the need to protect voting rights in America. Mm -hmm. So that work will continue, but will the Electoral Account Act help prevent future insurrections or January 6th type events? Absolutely. And if I heard you correctly, you said there are 10 Republicans in the Senate who are on board, which is significant because you need 10 to <laughs> overcome a filibuster. So action will move in the Senate. I want to switch gears and talk about the big mayor's race here in, in Los Angeles. I want to put up um, the latest poll that shows uh, our guests in the, in the first hour of the Sunday show, Congresswoman Karen Bass is leading her Republican challenger, Rick Caruso, if my math is right there, by 12 percent, by 12 percentage points. Would love to um, see, get your your reaction, if you wouldn't mind, to this mayor, to this mayor's race and why someone who everyone thought was going to be a formidable candidate, a billionaire like Rick Caruso, according to these poll numbers, isn't gaining any traction. Well, Substance matters, right? And not just in Los Angeles, but California has a long history of very wealthy candidates 
both sides of the aisle right. uh, seeking office, you can't buy your way in. Voters are pretty smart about this. Uh, I think uh, what Karen Bass has going for her is not just relationship with the community in all parts of the city and beyond, but a track record. I, look, I was in the state Senate when she served as Speaker of the Assembly. In the darkest days of the Great Recession, I saw her mastery of navigating politics and budgets uh, to survive economic downturns while maintaining a social safety net. Tremendous leadership. I've seen her in Congress being a tremendous voice for voting rights, for criminal justice reform, for foster youth. Uh, and I know that housing and homelessness is a big issue uh, here locally in Los Angeles, as it is in a lot of cities across America. I think she brings the relationships, the experience, and the demeanor uh, to pull people together to uh, get the hard work done. Senator Alex Padilla. The great state of California, thank you very much for coming back to the Sunday show and for coming on set. All right, good to see you again. All right. Coming up, forecasters are keeping a very close eye on Tropical Storm Ian, which is expected to become a hurricane by late tonight and could be on track.